so lonely for my darling so fair alone and so lonely for her love to share when there's someone to care Lost the woods, Mike. I won't, Georgie. I'm going to miss you. Miss you too, kid. Thanks. Bit Simmons. Well, Mike, I told you if we played our cards right, we'd make it to the happy camp. Been a big help, Gruber. Thanks. Yeah. Oh, will you see it up there? Trees, lots of sunshine, just like living out in the country. Boy, it sounds great. Yeah. Best part of it, though, it's uh, right near an airfield. Nelson. I don't get it. Well, you're a flyer once, right? Sure. F-84, Air Corps. Well, you'll find out what I'm talking about. Soon enough. This is where it happened. At San Quentin's work farm in Northern California. An escape so daring that it was headlined, The Escape of the Century. It was masterminded in August 1956 and involved a group of prisoners who on the surface had everything to lose by breaking out and little to gain. This is the story of what drove them to their deed and their flight from the police and the most dogged pursuer of all, destiny. Plane's nice too, huh? You know, I bet you could fly far, far away in that thing. Yeah, but uh, flying isn't for jailbirds, Gruber. Yeah, sure. But you know, just just supposing, Mike. Could that plane fly from here to, uh, we'll say Vancouver, without stopping? It's just about 600 miles. With a full tank and a light load, and uh, flying right on the beam. Ever fly that kind of plane? No. Could you? You're laying off. Oh, sure, sure. You flew jets. That's like asking Barney Oldfield if he could steer a kitty car. bucks stashed away in L.A. My old man's sitting on it. Fly me to Canada and half of it's yours. Look, Gruber, there's an account in this whole place that doesn't have a big bundle waiting for him. I've heard six, six of them claim they have the Brinks money stashed in their backyards. Yeah? Well, maybe this will convince you. Here. Vancouver. I'll get you on a ship. I'll get your papers. 
With 60 grand in your kick, you can start all over any place. South America, the Philippines, Australia. So the cops haven't found the money yet. Maybe you have it, but then maybe you don't. Look, listen to me. No, you listen to me, Gruber. I've got two years left in this place, and then I'm out. For good, not like you. I don't spend the rest of my life working my way into stirring out of it. Why, you... Listen, why do you think I nursed you along for a whole year so you'd get to this place? Steered you into that job in the canteen so you'd meet the big shots. Stuck my neck out when that junkie pulled a shiv on you. What do you think, I'm crazy by the color of your eyes? Look, this is your big chance. Don't be a small-time punk. Thanks. I appreciate it, Gruber. Maybe you should have checked with me before you dealt me in. I'm sitting this one out. Honest, John. And what's your wife gonna be doing while you sit it out? Meaning? Dear Mike, I've been thinking real hard about our marriage. Maybe it's best that we both start fresh. There's a fella here at the plant who wants to marry me. The letter. When did you read my letter? <laughs> Come on. Come on. Come on. Hey! What goes on? Oh, nothing. Except this joker here. I think he's too fine for the rest of us old fish. Well, that's the truth, ain't it? He didn't get started picking pockets at 14 like you, Gruber. 100 proof, bottle and bond. Where'd you get it? Broke into a hunting lodge. You should see that setup. Roulette wheels, crap tables, a complete bar, freezers full of steaks, everything but the dancing girls. I guess they brought their fresh beat with them. Yeah. You guys will end up drunk, and then the screws will start snooping around. They're bringing a dozen cases back to camp enough to get the screws drunk, too. Thanks. Thinking about the little woman, Mike? Talk to you about flying. They took my wings away. I want you to fly me out of here in one of those little planes. Try Western Airlines. No, no, I mean it. I got it all figured out. We can jump the ignition just like on a car any night. Uh-uh. You fly me 300 miles away from here in any direction, and I'll give you five grand cash. Look, Hap, I just turned down 60 grand. Shut up. Sure, Grubby Gruber here. He's got $119,000. His old man's keeping it for him in a little piggy bank in L.A. Half of it's mine if I fly him out of here, right? Yeah, I heard about that dog, Ruby. Oh, it's true. Show him your clipping. Hey, Mike, the super wants to see you in his office. Okay. You sent for me, Mr. Lang? Yeah, Gilbert. Sit down. What they call a summons and complaint. Your wife has filed for divorce. What do I do about it? Nothing. Unless you want to contest a divorce, then you'll have to hire yourself a lawyer. It says here the defendant has proven criminal inclinations of his crime and subsequent conviction inflicted grievous mental suffering on the plaintiff. Gil, but that's just regulation lawyer talk. I've seen a hundred divorce complaints that were worded exactly the same. Well, maybe it's all true. Just a minute, Gilbert. I, I know a thing like that can rock a man, but, but you're bright enough to know that this place is made up of two kinds. There's the case-hardened characters who make a way of life out of crime, and the, there's the guys like yourself who... Made one bad mistake and got caught. Maybe you ought to make that speech to my wife. I wish I could. Look, Gilbert, I know your record. You came out of the Air Force a hero. Two weeks you were married and nobody. And it's the same old story. Nothing went right. You got mad at the world. Pull a dumb stunt with your service revolver. That doesn't make you criminally inclined. Sure, Mr. Lang. I'll think about it. Let me know if there's anything I can do. Thanks. Here, take a good look. That way you won't have to play private eye behind my back. 
Look, Mike, I, I'm sorry. I, no, I lost my head. Read it from my wife's lawyer. It says, because of my criminal activity, I've inflicted grievous suffering. Divorce? Yeah. Yeah, I went through it, too. Oh, sure. You and me, we got a lot in common. I told you I was sorry. I'll make it up to you, Mike. sort me anymore? No. It's like the man said. I must be mad at the world. Yeah, there's a movie. You coming? No. I think this will do me more good tonight. Okay. projector keeps breaking down. Thought I'd come back and see how you're doing. When there's someone to care for, there's so much to live for. Yes, true love is worth Waiting for <laughs> true love. Oh man, that's a real laugh. What would you do first, Mike? If you're on the outside and had a bundle? Boy, I'd have me the biggest ball of my life. There ain't no sense in dreaming. I got a bundle in L.A. I don't get it. How come you've been in stir so long and now all of a sudden you remember it? Mm -hmm. I never forgot it. Not for one day. Not for one minute in all this time. I kept having pictures in my head of how would it be. It's all in small bills. A whole bathtub full of it. I kept seeing myself digging into it up to my elbows. But that was before. Now things are different. I, uh, I guess I'm gonna have to level with you. You read about that guy Collins who knocked over 17 joints in 30 minutes? Yeah. I've never been able to figure out how he moved so fast. I could tell you. That happened two years ago. I worked with him. Oh, come on, man. You worked with him then? Yeah. Now, if he decided to talk, they'd stick another hundred years under my time. It wouldn't be any soft go like this. No. They'd shove me behind the wall at Q and stop counting. That's why I gotta get out of here now. But I still can. Don't you see, Mike? Knock it off, will you, Gruber? But look at it from my angle, will you? I'm stuck in stir for, well, maybe the rest of my life. And down there, I got all that dough. Listen, if I decide to do it... Shh, keep it down. If I decide to do it, I'll be doing it because I think it's good for me and not because it's good for you. Could be good for both of us. And maybe, uh, you know, maybe if that wife knew you had all that loot, she might sing a different song. Nah. I'm going to let her marry her junior accountant. Me, I'm going to buy me a whole new life with all that money. I know my way around in the Pacific. 
I've been there. Sure. <laughs> and even if they catch up with you, what do they do? They add on another couple of years. <laughs> It'd be worth over 60 grand, wouldn't it? Oh, look, Mike. Nobody's gonna be hurt. Look at it this way. You got Itchy to take a plane up, so you took it for a joyride. What's a crime? <laughs> a joyride. <laughs> you know, Grover, the more I think about it, the better I like it. <laughs> it's too bad we can't do it tonight. Huh? Why not? That plane's as easy to handle as a Model A. Now, how do we get to the airfield? That's easy. We take one of the camp trucks, push it for a half mile, and we take this. Jump the ignition, and we're at the field ten minutes later. Come on, let's go. Wait a minute. How do we get past the guard at the gate? Do we tell him we came back to pick up a couple of shovels? I'll get rid of them. How? With this. They've been looking all over for this stuff. I just tell him I know where there's a whole case of it. While he's out beating the bushes, we'll push the truck out. been looking all over for this stuff. I know where there's a whole case of it. Come on, I'll show you. No, you don't. You call a captain, I'll go right back to bed. i never been here. He was dreaming. What's the angle, Gruber? I don't trust the captain to keep his mouth shut. He's got it in for me. When the rest of these fish find out I talk, push me off the top of a mountain with a bulldozer. Why are you telling me this? Look, the captain's already worked me over. He says I've been cooking up home brew for the guys and getting them drunk. He says he's going to send me back to Q. But it's a bum rap. Because this is what they've been drinking, and I didn't cook it. Oh, I can't leave my post. Like I said, maybe you better tell it to the captain. Where'd you come from? There's no room for you. Take the next plane. I've got a reservation. I told you they had a little bit of everything at that honey lodge, remember? You make with that jump wire. Come on, we watch the camp. Still good. Five grand. Uh-uh, Hap. -uh, You're getting a free ride. Gruber's paying. You really think he's got all that loot? You better have it. He does have an old man in L.A. He owns a hot dog stand or a gas station or something out in the valley. It's a gas station. 
Don't let him out of your sight, see? He's always angling. Remember the time he started knocking off the bookie joints because he figured they couldn't call the cops? They caught up with him, taking him up in the mountains to break his legs with a baseball bat. <laughs> Talked him out of it. You can talk, all right. Talked you into something tonight. Do you want? Let's take that one there right by the strip. Can you handle that one? You want to see my license? Give us a straight answer. You heard him. <laughs> sure, I can fly it. Well, let's push her out to the end of the strip. I'm going to need all the runway I can get at this altitude, especially with this load. started. She's going to make an awful racket. I'm going to have to give it a good warm-up. What if somebody comes out of that house? We just have to take care of them. After you get on the other side. While I get her wired up, you two fellas pace off the runway. I want 500 feet for takeoff. That ought to be about three feet to each stride. Okay. Now, if I take her up too soon, she'll stall. And if I take it too far, we'll go over that bank and wind up in the ditch. So? So give me a mark at 500 feet and make it something that I can see in the dark while I'm taxiing past it at 60 miles an hour. Uh, the truck lights. No, the truck's out. I got the jump wire for the plane. All right, then what? Those bed sheets on that line next to the house. Spread them out and weight them down. They'll do just fine. Well, get going. I said 500 feet. That is, if you can count that high. Oh, Gruber can. He can count to 119,000. <laughs> <laughs> Let's start her up till we get back. We got some more plans to make. Okay. Anybody in the house? Well, if there is. They're sound asleep. Well, when I start it, they'll have plenty of time to wake up. Yeah. You've got the rod hat. Go on up on the porch and wait. If anybody shows, just tell them to go back to sleep. And no rough stuff. I have no rough stuff. Now, wouldn't I look silly standing up there in that porch waving bye-bye while you two flew the coop? All right, give it to me. I'll do it. Think it all the time, huh? I'll hold on to the gun, see? We'll both go up on the porch. Okay, stop the beef, will you? Let's get started. All right. After she's all wound up, you start moving. But go slow. When we see you, we'll run down and hop in. And okay, keep going. Okay, okay. Come on. Stand still, you ox. Let's go on. Never mind. He knows what he's doing. Hey. Come here. I think I hear someone. Here. I don't hear anybody. If anybody shows, don't waste time arguing. I'll see if there are any lights on. Thank you. 
you get for murder in the state of California? Yeah. But you just better figure I'm not getting caught. Because you're in this now up to your eyeballs. And you're just as dirty as the rest of us. You heading north? Yeah. How much gas have we got? About a quarter of a tank. How far will that get us? About 100 miles, maybe a little more. A hundred miles? Well, that won't even get us yeah, out Yeah, yeah, I know. What do you want me to do, stop at a gas station? What do we do now? We look for an airport in Oregon. There should be some charts in that compartment. Get them out. Where are we going? Medford. Hey, that's a big town. They'll pick us up before we stop rolling. I'm sorry, I can't put this plane down in a car past you at night. You say your plane had about a quarter of a tank full of gas? Oh, enough for about an hour in the air. Say a maximum range of 150 miles. Well, they've been gone almost an hour already. So wherever they're headed, they... Now, wait a minute. It took them 15 minutes to get the field, another 15 to get off the ground. So they've been in the air less than 30 minutes. Well, if they have any sense at all, they'll have to come down to an airport with lights. There aren't many in a 150-mile radius. Look, you get in touch with the Oregon police at Grants Pass, Medford, and Klamath Falls. And see if you can get an okay for two states both. I'll try to get the headquarters, Grants City, Pass. City, Eureka, and Reading. Give me Crescent City, please. Fast your safety belt. We're going in for a landing. Pilot to tower. Pilot to tower, do you read me? Tower to pilot, we read you. Request permission to land. Tower to pilot, please identify yourself. Request permission for emergency landing. I'm off course and almost out of gas. Tower to pilot, repeat. Please identify yourself. Look, skip the quiz show and get me down before I have to crash this egg beater. Are you a student pilot? Yeah. How much fuel left? Five minutes. Tower to pilot, you're cleared to land on runway six. West wind, 10. Crash truck will be waiting. Right. Over and out. Come on, Wally. Let's get the car and pick him up. Right. Crash truck and reception committee. That's all we need. You know what you're doing? Hang on. Not that runway. Tower to pilot. Do you read me? Why are you heading for the tower? You want him to grab us? I have to because of the wind. Cops! Watch it! I'm going to take off again! stretch a highway and sit down. You said you couldn't. Don't get sick, Gruber, but your chances of living another 10 minutes are very poor. What I'm going to pull now is a dumb stunt in anybody's book. What do you mean? I mean that I got to find a piece of road with enough light to land and pray that we don't run into a car. And worst of all is that we might hang up on a power line, and if we do that, we're going to burn like a Christmas tree in January. Maybe we better go back and take our chances with the cops. We're in up to our eyeballs, remember, Hap? I'd rather go out this way. Go on back to the airfield. I'm telling you. Get off, will you? 
Comes that car. That's it, your ride. Yeah, where to? Come on, I'll draw your picture. Hey, you fellas all right? Yeah, I guess we're plenty lucky. Oh, you almost ran me down. First time I ever had a collision with an airplane. <laughs> almost, that is. What happened? Oh, we ran out of gas. You from Medford? No, but that's where we were headed. Well, you're still 20 miles away. You're lucky I stopped. There might not be another car along here till morning. I'll give you the... Uh. Uh. No, Trooper! Look, the cops will be along here any minute. What do you want them to do? Give a description of the car and us? Look, if there's going to be any more killing around here, I'm going to do it until you... Who are you? All right. Then we'll play it nice and clean. You mind if we borrow his car and his wallet? That's the first place to look for us. That's where the money is, isn't it? Sure. Well, I need that money more than I ever needed it before. And if you don't deliver, I'm going to save the state of California a whole lot of trouble. Hello? Who? You're kidding. No, I may. It's me. I broke out. Got this far in the back of a truck. Here you are, Hap. Two New Yorks, rare. Ah, fine. There, they look good. Oh, here, honey, cut it for me, will you? Gruber's old man runs a gas station out on San Fernando Road. They call him Curly. He's a two-time loser himself and used to fence auto parts. As far as we know, the old man's gone legit since Gruber was set up. That means he's got dough. Maybe. But Gruber was on the outside for six months before he got picked up. He had plenty of time to unload. Cops and the insurance dicks have gone over that place a dozen times. All right, so he doesn't have the dough and a coffee can in the kitchen. You three guys drop in on the old man, see what you can sweat out of him. If you draw a blank, Sit it out. Wait till Gruber makes his play. But sit it out if it takes a week. Well, if you pardon a woman for butting in, the cops will be waiting for Gruber, too. Yeah, I may, but these guys are clean. Sooner or later, Gruber will make his move. He'll call. You will answer the phone. Or he'll send a pal out. You do the listening. And then? And then, when we find Gruber, we'll play it by ear. What about me? Yeah, Jerry, I got a polite job for you this time. I want you to look up Judge Perkins for me. Might need a little legal advice. Yeah? Now, Jerry, you're in on the deal the same as all the rest of us, right? Right. All right with me. Well, where are you gonna be? Check here. May you know. I'd better know. I don't trust those roving eyes.
I'm closing for the night. Never mind the gas, Curly. Cops? Cops can't afford this kind of Havana. And you better blow. Cops around here are thicker than flies in a barn. Uh -huh. We gotta talk to you. I'll park the car. You go on inside and make it look friendly. You're not gonna cause me any trouble, are you? Uh, you just be a good boy, Curly, and everything will be all right. License QJV-988. Three men cannot identify. Over. Yeah. 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 Right across the street from the Glendale station. Yeah. What? Talk it up, I can't hear you. Yeah. Yeah, bring the truck, we'll look for you. Winnie's still running that quick stop motel? Okay. He won't ask any questions. What's he talking about? <laughs> Whose side's he on, anyway? My own. You got any clothes in that truck that'll fit us? They belong to the customers. He's right. Get us a couple of suits. OK, let's talk. Where's the money? The old man knows. I told him to divide it up and spread it around. About to take him a couple of days to get it together. How do we reach him? Look, I just can't call him up. And I can't show there either. The cops will be thicker than. You know, I uh, I had planned on letting it cool off a little first. But you're in such a big rush. Yeah, that's right. I'm in a big rush. Look, I can't settle somebody like Richie because the old man won't even listen to him. He's got orders to wait for me in person. You got any ideas? I'm still listening. All right. It means taking a couple of chances, but this is the way I got it figured. Now, you listen real close. Go ahead, talk. From San Francisco, Lieutenant, they picked up that Oregon car. Well, at least we know they're headed south. Those three hoods are still camped at the gas station. Want to bring them in? Uh, what for? They'll tell us they were dickering with the old man to buy a gallon of gas. But why are they there? They must have something to do with Gruber. Sure. I start worrying about them when they leave the gas station. Just keep watching the old man. He's the link to Gruber. Sure. Gruber knows that, too. Suppose he decides to wait, well, three months before contacting the old man. No. No, he needs the money now. But you can't be sure he's got that money. Or that he left it with Curly. I'm not sure of anything. Just working the leads we've got. Keep checking Gruber's connections and all of the likely motels. Concentrate in the valley. I'm seeing Mike Gilbert's wife again. I, I think she might cooperate. OK, Lieutenant.
I must have washed 50 windshields today. Want to give me a job, Curly? You want a job? Clean up that mess you made back there. More business, Pop. Anybody you know? Five, Pop. Regular. 49 Chevy panel truck. License ORA 115. Sign reads Machard's Cleaning and Dying. 12096 Ventura Boulevard. Over. Will you check under the hood, bud? Yeah, sure. It'll be a dollar forty-nine. Yeah. My gas pedal's sticking. Want to get your oil can, curly, and uh, give it a squirt? Why, right, sure. Hey, Pop. It's me. Listen. Get the dough together and bring it to me, Sweeney's. So how much? All of it. There's been three stiffs camping here since yesterday looking for your bundle, and the law's all over the place. Start her up. I'll get rid of them. You shake the cops. Remember, Sweeney's. Sweeney's? Yeah. What's going on in there? Get inside. Not so fast, stupid. The cops may be watching. All right, wise guy, how are you going to get rid of those punks? Stop at the first phone booth, Richie. I'll show you. Hello, police. They're killing this old man. Listen, they're killing this old man inside a gas station in San Fernando and Granite. You better get over there quick. That ought to cool them off for a while. Come on. Pull the old man in, too, but he'd be loose by morning. We ought to be hearing from him by tomorrow night. Back to Sweeney's. Hey, you want some mask? OK, Richie. I want to borrow your truck for an hour. What for? Well, I figure you'll stay put now until your old man shows up. This gives me time to look up my wife. Don't you think they got her place staked out, too? Maybe. But I got another way of reaching her. I thought you kissed her off. Uh, since we're in L.A., I decided to be big about it and give her another chance. Thanks, Richie. How many? One for you and one for me. How about it, Robbie? Mike! But if the police see you around here... Around here? I don't think so, but they've been hounding George at home. That figures. That's why I came to you. I've got to talk to her, Robbie. You shouldn't even try, Mike. Take a seat in the last row, aisle A. I'll be in there in a few minutes. This is the last show. Why did you do it, Mike? Turned out to be more than I bargained for, Robbie. I guess I just didn't think it through very well. Can't you go back? I can't explain now. It's not all bad. I'm going to have some real money. That's why I have to see Georgia. We can get away and start over again. You don't really believe that? Yes, I do. Mike, about Georgia, you just don't understand. She's scared and she's angry. Mike, she'll turn you over to the police. Oh, no, Robbie, she wouldn't do that. She's still my wife. She's my sister, Mike. I love her, but I know her. She figures she's made a terrible mistake. She doesn't want any part of you. She'll have to tell me that herself. Look, Robbie, that's where I'm staying. Now, I don't want to scare you, but 
that paper gets into the wrong hands, I'm... I'm through. Just give it to Georgia and tell her to meet me there. To get there without a police escort. It's not too hard. And also tell her that if she doesn't come to me, I'll go to her. You shouldn't trust her, Mike. I have to, Robbie. Georgia, wake up. Out the light. Georgia, it's about Mike. Mike? Have they caught him? No. He wants to see you. Is he here? He came to the theater. I think he wants you to go away with him. Where? To San Quentin for a second honeymoon? Georgia, see him. At least talk to him. But why? Because whatever he did, he's still in love with you. He needs somebody. Where is he? He wrote it down on a piece of paper. What are you going to do? Well, call the police. Well, it's the best thing for him, isn't it? Oh, Georgia, don't be a hypocrite. You're only thinking of what's best for you. You nagged at him until he was nearly out of his mind. When he robbed that gas station, it was because he thought it was the only way he could hold on to you. When he broke out of prison, it was for the same reason, you. Look. You're a big girl now, Robbie. When you had a crush on him before, well, that was a joke. But it isn't funny anymore. You have to know that people are responsible for the things that they do. That goes for him, and it goes for you, too. Now, give me that piece of paper. I will not. Oh? Then maybe Lieutenant Walters can talk a little sense into you. Hello? This is Mrs. Gilbert, Georgia Gilbert. I'd like to speak to Lieutenant Walters. It's about Mike Gilbert. Robbie? Lieutenant Walters? It's me, Richie. They sprung your old man. They're holding the others. Yeah, just like I figured. We ought to be hearing from Pop soon. Well, I'll see you in the morning. Oh, um... Uh, don't pull out without saying goodbye. Yeah. You've been a big help, Richie. We'll take care of you. Okay, Roy. Wilbur, do you, uh, trust him? Who, Richie? Yeah. Yeah, he wants a chunk of that loot. Hey, listen to this. At his preliminary hearing, Howard Collins confessed implication in 17 holdups, one of which resulted in the death of an age night clerk in a downtown Los Angeles hotel. Yeah. Collins named Roy Gruber as his partner in crime. Gruber is one of the three men who escaped by airplane from San Quentin only three days ago. Now that he is wanted for murder, police of three states have intensified their search for the escape group. I didn't think they were trying very hard. But they'll turn the heat on now. Who is it? Mike, it's Robbie. It's all right. It's George's kid sister. All right. You told her where we are? I said it's all right, Gruber. Move. Come on in, Robbie. You sure you weren't followed? Yes, I'm sure. I drove around in circles for an hour. Where's Georgia? She called the police. Did you give her the address? No. Okay, Robbie, thanks. You better go now. Go where? The cops know she's been here. They're looking for her right now. What's she gonna tell them? She forgot the address? 
Okay, so we'll move. Oh, yeah, sure. Move on what? How much bread have you got? What are we gonna do, start knocking over gas stations? Look, the old man will be here in a little while, and then we'll blow. Look, I don't want her involved. She goes now. Mike, she is involved. If she don't talk to the cops now, she's an accessory. And remember, it's murder. All right, so she talks. Move! Mike, he's right. I wouldn't talk to the police. I couldn't. Not until I know you're safe. Look, afterwards, it'll be a walk. She can tell him she came here to get you to turn yourself in, and we held her. And instead of a rack, she gets a medal. Oh, please, Mike, let me stay. I'm scared. Perkins says they're holding the guys in the kidnap rap. Could be serious if the old man presses a charge. He won't. They just stall him for time. Perkins, talk to them? Yeah. Who we'll called the cop? Piggy thinks it was that punk in the cleaning truck, Richie. I checked on him. He runs a book in the valley. Could be a connection to Gruber's. Let's look up, Richie. Who is it? It's me, Curly. That's him. Come on in. Hi. Hello, son. You. How much? Fourteen grand. Fourteen? Where's the rest of it? Come on, talk. I need that money now. Where is it? Been dodging cops all night. Come on, I said, where is it? That's enough. You said the money was all over town. What'd you expect? Protecting little girls and old men, huh? Very funny. Let's get out of this crate. Ah, the truck's okay. Cops checked Richie last night. They found him clean. Didn't they, Richie? They've had time to count the dough. Let's go. All right, keep the motor on. Come on, Richie. That's just so you remember the play. Come on, move. Time for the old payola. Over there, you. Didn't expect to see me again. Take it out easy. Drop it. Sure, Hap. No fireworks. All right, get the money. How much? Doesn't look like what I came for. Do you want to know approximately or exactly? Count it. Oh, no. I want to finish you, too. But I see by the papers the cops will take care of that. You want to wait for the cops? That's the truck, all right. It was checked off in the last bulletin. Uh-huh. They're not interested. There's two men getting in that truck. They're both armed. You were the one in a hurry. Get out of here. I'm real glad they got to live it up so big. <laughs> They'll never get them out of there. Yeah. I wonder how that fat pig will look with an apple stuck in his mouth. Where's the car? Right by the curb. Let's go. No, oh, but they're waiting for us. We'll find yeah. out. Hey, wait a minute, he can't walk. We'll get him to a dock. Come on, come on. You want to leave me here for the cops? Hey, she stays. Keys. 
All right, get rolling. Better get me to a doctor. I'm bleeding. You'll live. There's that Kraut doctor in Tijuana. Hoffman or Hoffberg or... Hoffmeyer. Yeah. He'll do anything for a C-note. How much cash you got on you? About 15 bucks. Any money? Not more than 10. You got any cash? In my purse, back at the motel. Great. Now, at least it's a couple of bucks. Yeah, I guess Tijuana's as good a place as any. Pop, you stay here and get the rest of that dough together. We'll be staying at the International under the name of... Uh, wait a minute. Burnside. Emery Burnside. Can you remember that? Emery Burnside. Yeah. Yeah. We expect to hear from you in two or three days. As soon as the sleeping beauty here wakes up, you let him take the wheel. You scram. Look, what do you want with the girl? <gasps> Where are we going? What, what do you mean? Answer me. Tijuana. What hotel? The International. Yeah, you see? She talks too much. Besides, with the chick along, at least I don't have to worry about you getting out of line. Go on, Pop, pull over. You know what? Look at his face, and they're gonna stop us. Going down, I don't look. Hey, Richie, can you hear me? Close your eyes and lean your head back. You're asleep. You, get closer to him. Put his head on your shoulder. Come on, real friendly like. Across the bridge. Take a left off the main drag. What happened to him? His own fault. He got drunk and fell down some stairs. He'll be all right in a day or two. That's all. You two in there. I'll ring the bell for dinner. Come on. You gotta get me to a doctor. It's swollen up. I think it's infected. Well, look, you know that quack won't touch you without any cash. Tomorrow I'll figure out a way to get some. Now we get you fixed up. Here. I keep feeling he's watching us. Mike, where do you go from here? I'll get you out of it, Robbie. Oh, I know. But about you? How will you get out of it? I just want to crack at that money. It's my only chance. How many people have to be hurt and killed for that money? I haven't hurt anybody, Robbie. I haven't killed anybody. Oh, Mike, I know the whole story. The guard at the camp. The man in Oregon. Hap and his friend dead. Now Richie and the old man mixed up in it. How many more, Mike, before you get the money and, and after? Robbie, you're talking about Gruber. You're not talking about me. Mike, I'm talking about Gruber and you. You're responsible in the eyes of decent people anywhere. In my eyes, too, Mike. dead than rot in San Quentin for 20 years. I know there are worse things than being dead, but there are also worse things than being in prison. You're a pretty smart kid, Robbie. Name it. 
All right. Becoming like Gruber, that's worse. He's not a man, and he's worse than any animal I can think of. He doesn't live in a world with people, Mike. He lives alone in a jungle. Oh, Mike, I don't want you to become like Gruber. I won't become like Gruber, Robbie, I promise. Get a shave. Then we're going to Cali anywhere. I figured to run into some pusher I know in a crowd. We gotta raise some scratch. Gee, I'm leaving that with you. In case Mike here decides to slip his leash and come back for the girl. You take care of him. You take care of both of them. Oh yeah. And uh, just remember, you're in Mexico now. The rap down here for murder is about ten years. Less than you get in the States for just knowing me. Come on. Fifteen bucks. Fifteen bucks? Boy, that won't go very far. Well, maybe it will. I'll hunt you on a horse. Poor Mike. I put the fifteen clams on his nose. They're off and running. Breaking fast from the gate is Stippy down in front. Lucy May second by half a length and Hassie on the third by a length. Poor Mike is coming up fast on the outside. As they make the turn, it's Stippy Dan first by a length. Poor Mike second on the outside by half a length. Lucy May and Hacienda neck and neck leading the rest of the field. Fifteen dollars. Every cent I had. I don't know how I'll get home. There he is, over to the rail with that other man. You're certain? I am. In the stretch, it's Dippy Dan by three legs, Hacienda by four, poor Mike and Nick, and Lucy May. And it's Dippy Dan, Hacienda, and Lucy May. You too. Come with us. Well, senores, I told you I would have you out today, and here you are, free. Yeah, well, it's practically tonight, Mendez. Been rotten that hole all day while you collabed with those pigs. Well, senor, it was a very complex matter. I had to persuade the lady to drop the charges. I had to handle the police, who were very angry. All right, Mendez, we're out, and we appreciate it. Now, let's get back to the hotel. Oh, but I hope it is clear that, in addition to the $50 you gave me, I spent 200 of my own to settle this matter. It's a great deal of money for me. And in addition to that, there is a matter of my fee. Your fee. Can you drive us back to the hotel? I told you, as soon as my friend gets there from L.A., we'll take care of you. Well, this is my car. Si, senor. Tocante al grupo Burnside que está aquí. ¿Qué sabe usted? Un momento, sir. Por favor. Si, senor. No, senor.
Anybody been looking for me? Only this telegram, senor. This is Monday night. Hey, Mendes, where's Oceanside? 30, 40 miles above San Diego. Let's go. Can you drive us there tonight? Now? Look, I do not understand. You said you would pay me at the hotel, my $200 and my fee. You said you were expecting a friend. Yeah, and it's just like I said. Only now, instead of meeting us here, he's gonna meet us in Oceanside. Look. We owe you 400 bucks, right? Okay. You drive us to Oceanside and I'll make it an even five. That way you pick up an extra 100 bucks and you're back here in two or three hours. But in California, Senor Burnside, it is a different matter. The obligation was contracted in Mexico. If you repudiate it, I will be helpless. Grow up, Mendez. You're helpless right here. We ain't got the dough. Oh, I see. Well, don't look so sick about it. We'll pay you. Why do you think we're taking you along with us? Of course. It's just that I'm out a great deal of money. Mm -hmm. Mike, come here. You stay here with Mendez. There's enough here to check us out. I'll get the others. We'll go in his car. The girl stays. Oh, huh? Why not? Split two ways. No! I'm dying, don't you understand? I don't care about the money. Hey, Mike's hurt. He wants to see you. Open up. No. Okay. And we're clearing out without you. Where is he? Come on, no time to waste. You're getting me to a dock. Now! You wait here, Richie. I'll bring one back for you. Look, I can't carry on my back. I can still walk. Give me a hand. No, Gloomy! No! Shut up. Mike's waiting for us downstairs. You can scream all you want later. Come on. You wouldn't stay. You drive. Give me the keys. Come on, come on. Cesar, they have just left in a Oldsmobile, light green, 54 sedan, Mexican plates. You can pick them up at the border. They are heading for Sunset Motel, one mile north of Oceanside. Okay. Mexican purchases? All right. I have my border pass in there. All the rest of you American? Yeah. Where were you born? 
Glendale, California. Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. This? Los Angeles. Los Angeles, California. Any Mexican purchases? Are you kidding? I left every cent of the track. All right. Now make yourself comfortable. As soon as my friend gets here from L.A., you get your dough. Mr. Mendez, do you know who these men are? Shut her up, Mike. The more he knows, the tougher it's going to be on him and us. He's a murderer, wanted by the police. And he's no better. They both escaped from San Quentin less than a week ago. Robert, you're not doing him any favors. Is this true? You know, I had planned on sending him home, paying him off. But now this complicates things. Oh, and you were going to have the money nice and clean, nobody hurt. Now it's Mr. Mendez. And how many others since yesterday morning? Do you know what happened to Richie? Shut her up. He's dead. Mr. Gruber pushed him down the shaft. All right, let's go. Come on. Yes, your friend, Mr. Gruber. Shut up, get in. What do you plan to do with him after Curly gets here? They know too many facts. And she talks too much. Remember that small airfield we passed a few miles back? Yeah. I figure while we're waiting for Curly, I'll go back there and try to line up a plane. Yeah. I'll tell him I want to rent it or I'll buy it. We left plenty of dough. Yeah. I've had a belly full of flying. This time we'll have plenty of gas. And if you decide to run out? Without the money? What, a girl? Yeah, a girl. You think you can do it? Get a plane? Why not? If we can take off in a plane, we don't have to worry about leaving them behind. We'll be a thousand miles away before the cops can add it up. But if we have to take off in Curly's car, where are we? Yeah. All right, go ahead. Operator, give me the police. Do you want the police? What's this all about? Federal border control. They followed you from TJ. We've been watching you ever since you landed in jail down there. We know about your arrangement with Mom. We figure you're pushing junk over the border, maybe a lot of it. <laughs> Are you guys barking up the wrong tree? We'll have to search you. All of you, and the car. Suppose you don't find anything. Well, we'll let you go. That's fine, except for one thing. Anybody who walks in there is going to get his head blown off, and there may be a couple other people killed, too. Don't you know who I am? Gilbert. Mike Gilbert. And the guy in there is Roy Gruber. We're the convicts that escaped San Quentin in an airplane. I had no idea. I might have recognized Gruber. We've been looking hard for him. What's the setup in there? Well, there's a girl in there who doesn't know anything about it. And a guy named Mendez. He didn't even know who he was working for until a couple of minutes ago. 
I figured that Gruber never let him get out alive. That's why I came out here to call you. Gruber's armed? Yeah. Who are you meeting here? We're supposed to meet some old guy named Curly. Claims to be Gruber's father. He was meeting us here with a big bundle of dough. Did he bring the money? Almost $100,000. You know, I always wondered if he really had it. I'd like to take a look at it. We figured it was a cash payment for a big shipment of junk. I'd better call for more men. Sure, send for the squad cars, lights, sirens, tommy guns. Gruber will use them in there as shields or to bargain with. You have any ideas? Yeah. Give me a gun. I'll go in there myself. Ah. I give you my word, I'll bring him out. No. Listen, he thinks I'm down at that little airfield lining up a plane for our getaway. Suppose I bring someone with me, someone that wants to make a deal on a plane. One of you in street clothes. This way you'll be inside and you'll be armed. And if Gruby gets nervous, I'll draw his fire and you can finish him off. Uh, suppose he gangs up with Gruber. Oh, come on. You're gonna have a gun in my back. Well. I think it's worth a try. You're about my size. Can I borrow your clothes? I'll try to return them without any holes, now. Well, okay. Who's this? Gruber, put that gun away. I just made a deal with this guy. Thousand dollars down, no questions asked. Yeah, you just made your last mistake. Relax, will you? I'll spell it out for you. How do I know who this joker is? Look, I don't know what's going on, but let's just skip it. Stand still. Real still. Turn around. Lock the door. When I break the window, you scream. Throw it here on the floor. All right, now, who are you? Come on, who are you? Let's see your wallet. What'd you get me into, mister? Go ahead, show him your wallet. I'll get it for you, all right. Drop! guys who only got a scratch. Now, thanks to you, I can join the club. In there. Mike! It's all right, miss. You call the police. It's just his shoulder, miss. We'll get him to a hospital. What's going to happen to him? Why, I think you'll pull through, miss. He saved my life. And maybe yours. We'll do what we can for him. Okay, now, Robbie. 